All right, we are here with some gameplay footage from a league challenge that I TO'd at my local game shop. On the left, we have Nick, and on the right, we have Alex. Alex is playing a Giratina Lost Zone box style of deck. Uh, Alex typically has been playing a lot of Guard of War recently, locals the last few months. So to see them play something different is kind of cool. And on the left, we actually do have Guard of War in Nick's hands here. Uh, I don't know. I know the result of the game uh, from TOing, but I don't know any of the gameplay here. But we do see Alex start off with the Combi and the active. Nick's got the Mana Fee. I'm sorry, the Mew there. And Alex is starting off with a Nest Ball, searching through their deck, double checking what cards are prized. And it looks like they're going to eyeball the Raiding Greninja here. And they also have the Battle VIP Pass. Definitely starting off with some gas here in game number one of one of course local challenges are almost always best of one unless you have a to that likes best of three for whatever reason or they just think that time is going to be you know all over the place for it so most likely if you go to a league cup or a league challenger to play some best of one league cups will have a top cut of best of three so it looks like alex has decided to grab another comfy and a cramorant to start off uh, so they're probably going to start some flower selectings here since you can't play a support on the first turn. So yeah, here comes the concealed cards first, discarding a grass energy, drawing two cards here. And then, yeah, we're going to start seeing flower selecting from Alex to start getting cards into the loss zone to hit the magic numbers of four, seven, and 10. That way you can use things like Sableye and Giratina's V star power, but they do decide to send a Giratina V out into the loss zone. So they must have another way to get one on the board here this turn so they can evolve and potentially attack with it on turn two or they're just not feeling super confident in their setup here but there's the jet energy to become up into the active and of course the another flower selecting and there goes a cone fee so three cone fees technically in play or out of play already one left to be determined and a path to the peak and a pass i think that path was a little bit premature but maybe they can uh, expect to see that you know they're gonna have to rely on the greninja but nope Nick does have the Artisan to bump and the Battle VIP Pass to start the search off here. I'm gonna eyeball some Ralts, potentially Greninja. Uh, gotta keep in mind that Artisan cannot grab anything with a rule box, but your Battle Pass can. So depending on what the rest of their hand looks like, they may or may not want to establish a board where they're able to, you know, just go full on with Ralts, maybe get a mana to protect themselves from Raining Greninja on the opposing side and or potentially, you know, load up Zacian. At the same time, though, uh, Alex did not bench a Giratina V, so I really don't see a reason why Nick would want to put a Zacian down. Still taking a moment here to double check, confirming what cards are in their prize cards. Definitely a skill that a lot of players need to pick up on, but also you need to start doing it a little bit faster. Uh, in a lot of the best of three games out there, a lot of prize checking and such really just takes a lot of time. All right, final selections here for that battle pass. It is a Radiant Greninja and a Ralts. They have yet to use the Artisan. Maybe they will concealed cards first and see what they can find or potentially even use Muse Mysterious Tale, looking at the top six cards, trying to find an item card and put it in their hand, maybe getting lucky and hit another battle pass. And they do bench a Cresselia down, and it looks like we're gonna just go ahead and see an Iono here. Both players will shuffle their hands up, put them on to the bottom of the deck and draw cards, equal to how many prize cards they have left. Both players here have six prize cards, so they're both gonna get a full hand of six cards here. And it looks like Nick's got a level ball, a couple psychic energy, so it looks like concealed cards is gonna happen first, discarding that psychic energy to draw two cards. Another research and a psychic energy in there as well. And gonna go for the artisan here, most likely gonna grab Ralts. Not really much else you could grab other potentially than mana fee at this point in time if it's available, but there is the memory skip Ralts from Silver Tempest, so we'll see that come down. Uh, memory skip is interesting to say the least in this matchup. 
Uh, you don't necessarily use it against the Lost Zone unless like, you know, they have like a single Sableye and no way to switch out where you can lock them out of using that at the end of the game to steal multiple prize cards. Uh, but again, just a, a switch and a pivot definitely just does change that completely. And here is the Mysterious Tale. Once again, looking at the top six cards, trying to find an item card. And I see a rare candy and a level ball. So they're gonna definitely double check their hand. I don't see any Gardevoir. So it looks like the level ball is what they're gonna take. They might just even play the level ball here. And grabbing another Ralt. So, so three Ralts down on turn one. And energy in the bin pretty solid turn one definitely not the best you could have but definitely better than the turn one alex had only getting two cards into the lost zone in a weird world alex could have had another comfy uh, he could have benched that comfy uh if whatever the other card wasn't important or not and then you know retreated manually with that jet into the third comfy getting a third one in there and that way abyss seeking and then a chorus would get them to seven on the following turns Definitely some missed sequencing. All right, and here we go back over to Alex. And concealed cards first action. They're going to take your discarding a sick energy, drawing two more off the top. Uh, I do see a Giratina in hand, but they're going to go for the flower selecting here as well. Probably just trying to find a chorus. There goes a jet energy out into the lost zone. Uh, there is a chorus in hand now, so. Uh, that's definitely going to be the play here and you get to look at the top five cards of your deck you get to put three of them into your hand and two in the lost zone looks like an easy decision on that battle vip pass just you get rid of it every time and there goes a guillotine of v star in this matchup you really only need one fully established guillotine of v star uh, i personally love to use shred uh onto some of the single prizers early on it also bops the shining arconic artivore at the same time though the v star does have that extra hp so it has to force them to reach a little bit higher to get the ko but they take two prizes either way so if you can split your resources uh consider it like in against a lost zone box where you're gonna lose two comfy uh for whatever reason to like radiant greninja or whatever you it's okay just to lose a giratina instead of the comfies and we're gonna see a manual retreat here into the Cramorant. Looks like there's not much else. There is the Giratina finally hitting the bench. And I would love to see an attachment onto it this turn. There is a Sableye being benched as well. And I feel like, yeah, you definitely wanna attach here to that Tina. That way it takes some of the pressure off in the following turns, unless you're gonna be reliant on that concealed cards. And yeah, just a spit innocently for the KO. Cramorant's ability lets you attack for free if you have four or more cards in the Lost Zone. So first prize taken in favor of Alex, and yep, it goes back over to Nick. He promotes the Ralts here with the Psychic Energy attached. Definitely gonna start seeing some Curlia here uh, this turn. Uh, we do know they've got Level Ball. They might conceal cards first. Uh, typically, that seems to be what most people want to do uh, that way you can potentially draw into more curlias and then level ball for the others but they're going to double check and see what's available on the deck looking at a Ralts, looking at a curly here most likely just going to take the curly here and evolve one of the other pokemon you gotta go ahead and use the artisan to grab the fourth and final Ralts and slap it down onto the bench In an ideal world, this turn, Nick would have Rare Candy into the act to be able to swing with a Shining Arcana Gardevoir and try to avoid putting down the EX. I'm not quite sure if Alex plays Cleansing Gloves in his Tina list. I definitely think it's a very strong card and it also makes Cramorant a bully in this matchup as well. So we do see Nick bench, or I'm sorry, evolve one of those Curlias onto the bench and attached to the active there. And here comes an Iono. So yeah, maybe they're gonna look for that rare candy guardy. They have not used refinement just yet as well. Another hand reset here. This time Alex goes down to five since they did take a prize card on the last turn. Nick still gets six cards here. There is the rare candy and it looks like a Gardevoir EX in hand. We do see the concealed cards being the next ability being used. Drawing two, another rare candy, another rare candy. There's three rare candy in hand. 
Whew. But yet yeah, no Shining Arcana. So let's see if they can hit it off of this. Discarding another Psychic Energy to draw two more. Another level ball. Definitely will get them a little bit deeper. Level ball. Find another Corellia here. You can evolve another Ralts. And then Refinement once again. And here is the evolution. I do appreciate that they did put down a marker on the other Ralts that came into play this turn. That way they know it, it can evolve here. So yep, Alex is just like, what's going on? And he's like, oh, okay, a level ball, curly evolve, refinement. And it looks like a collapse in a battle pass. So I see Zashin in the back end. So maybe here we're gonna swing in with the EX to change the prize trade back up. Yeah, Rare Candy into the active, bringing up the Guard of War EX. Doesn't have an energy in hand to manually attach, so they're just going to have to use the ability here to put two damage counters on it and swing with this Guard of War. Not quite sure what they're, uh, they're thinking about here. I'm going to go for the Retreat, though, and send it to Cresselia. And then, yeah, they can actually just load up a lot of damage counters all over the board here with the Psychic Embrace ability of Gardevoir. And then they can actually snipe out a Comfy or a Sableye. So they have 20, 40, 60, 80 in play already. And yeah, they could just take that Sableye out. Um, I think Alex still only has five cards in the Lost Zone, if I'm not mistaken. So still half a ways away from using Sableye. But getting rid of a Comfy is equally as good, preventing them from getting more cards into the Lost Zone. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and use that Memory Skipper. I'm sorry, the uh, Mirage Steps to move the damage counters off of all of those Pokemon over to Comfy to KO. And yeah, Alex is going to start off with the uh, Concealed Cards here, evolving the Giratina into the Giratina V-Star. And hit another Colrus as well off of that Concealed Cards, just getting lucky on that. Uh, we see Path to the Peak, which is definitely a really good thing to take here to turn off that Guard of War from being able to do all these things. Getting rid of another Tina. So, yeah, they're limiting themselves down to one gear Tina in this matchup, which is typically okay. Again, you can change the price trade and be more aggressive with things like Shred. Uh, and Abyss Seeking is honestly super huge in this matchup. And getting rid of a Colrus is definitely telling, too, depending on what the rest of their hand looks like. Considering most Gardevoirs play three to four copies of Iono, uh, you really want to keep as many supporters as you can as the Tina player here. Uh, we do see a switch cart. Considering being played here, probably going to switch into the Comfy so they can flower selecting as well. And instant uh, eating of the battle pass. I'm not quite sure what, what they're thinking about here, uh, why that took so long. Saving time is definitely super important when you're playing these long, thought-out, methodical decks like Lost Zone, Variants, or Gardevoir. You need a lot of time to be able to complete your game, and any managing of microseconds actually helps so much. Alex definitely can use Mirage Gate now at this point in time. Again, though, uh, it feels bad to swing and get rid of your energy cards over this Cresselia this way. Uh, I don't know, again, if they play Cleansing Gloves. Uh, if they had Cleansing Gloves, Cramorant could take care of the Cresselia and push them up ahead even further while still reserving the Tina on the bench. This is gonna give Nick an option to potentially like bench that Zacian they have in their hand and then send it up to bop the Giratina using Psychic Embrace to load it up with energy. And we're gonna see what's going on here. Now, Nick also does not have a Manaphy in play. 
So Alex could potentially, depending on what they have in their hand, it looks like they do have a water in hand. They could go water, whatever else. They have another switch out on to the Radiant Greninja and swing with Moonlight Shirk in this turn, taking two prize cards. And we are gonna see a water on to the Greninja and they might not have a switch out, so it's looking like we're gonna see an energy hit that Comfy instead here. Yep, water to Greninja, Psychic to Comfy. Doesn't, must not have another switch out. Uh, again, I did see the water energy in Alex's hand here. So they are able to potentially swing with Moonlight Shark in this turn. Another Comfy hits the bench and it looks like Alex is just gonna retreat into the next Comfy and go ahead and flower selecting one more time. And it looks like Manaphy goes to the Lost Zone. And at this point, if they were hit, able to hit another gate, that would feel pretty good. But there is the Path Bump. And are they potentially just stuck here? Uh, we see a jet on the cram, and it's just going to come up into the active spot here and swing for 110, not getting the KO. Priscilla has 120 HP. Just things aren't going very well for Alex here, unfortunately. Now, in return, though, for Nick, they won't be able to embrace on to Cresselia again, but they could, uh, in fact, embrace elsewhere if they wanted to and then use those... Uh, use that attack and swap damage over but no they're just going to come up into the ex they're going to play a collapse stadium both players are forced to discard a pokemon and yeah good play from nick to get rid of that damage Cresselia. that way they can't get picked off for one damage counter from Sableye's lost mine and it looks like alex just decided to get rid of one of the comfy here another iono once again to follow up reducing the hand size even though they're getting five cards getting rid of a card hand of like 10 to 12 cards sometimes uh, is definitely good and it forces your opponent to do a lot more and considering they only have one comfy in play uh, they might not you know have too much i do believe they've gone through a lot of courses as well so we'll see what happens here uh, we do see the reversal and a super rod in the hand of nick looks like we're gonna go ahead and use refinement here and discard a boss they're eyeballing up nope gonna go further back no they are gonna go ahead and discard an ultra ball for the refinement drawing into another boss and another super rod so they've got two rods and two bosses in hand and reversal and this might just be a turn where they swing with the ex here putting two damage counters on it and again uh tina for you know one gate now after the comfy comes up and gets that 10th card into the lost zone can use star requiem to instant ko or in a perfect world where alex potentially has cleansing gloves to swing this matchup but we're just going to see double embrace onto the active and then yeah now no matter what attack tina uses here in this instance Gardevoir will definitely go down and yeah, take another prize. Taking the lead here, four to five in favor of Nick. And Alex does start with the Comfy and a flower selecting, of course. Looks like another path to the peak and a psychic energy. Uh, I think that uh, that path is really important, but also at this point in time, you have to consider how much energy you have access to here. I do see a switch card in hand, so they could potentially start using Lost Mine this turn after this 10th card hits the Lost Zone. Uh, they do decide to get rid of the path and they keep the psychic energy. So they, yeah, we might just see the Sableye start doing Sableye things this turn. Spreading damage counters, potentially being able to set up multiple knockouts. And again, Nick was really good about that collapse stadium. Getting rid of the Cresselia to prevent Sableye from putting just a single counter out of its 12 onto it for a KO. Alex plays a rope and Nick is going to switch back into a Ralts. And here is the Sableye as predicted. He's just going to go ahead and double check that he's at 10. But Nick has been keeping count for us as well. On top of his V-Star marker, there is the attachment for the Sableye. And yeah, this must be just lost mine time here.
he asked how many cards are in hand. Uh, four prize cards uh, on Nick's side keeps him out of Roxanne potential. And the rope may or may not have been something that we wanted to see. And uh, is Alex considering a boss's orders? Nope, looks like we're just going to go ahead and lost mine. Probably taking out one of the Curlias, um, if not completely, but partially. Looks like eight there. They've got four left to play with. I'm gonna put all four on the Curlia. And yep, one going down, taking a prize card, tying the game up, and leaving him with just one Curlia in play. Looks like he's got one in hand, uh, and I believe there's still potentially rare candies available somewhere. I know they might have went to the bottom of the deck because of all the Ionos. And of course, Ralts in the active. So rare candy shining Arcana Gardevoir would probably be really good here. And Super Odd is definitely going to randomize the deck once again. Looks like Ralts, Curlia, and Cresselia going back in. Cresselia is still an absolute unit here in this matchup. And double checking before they shuffle to see if they're going to play anything else. And nope, they're just going to go ahead and shuffle. Maybe we're going to see a refinement here, potentially looking for some sort of situational out or another way to find a means to an end. And yeah, Ultra Ball here. Going to go ahead and discard. Looks like Curlia and a boss's orders. Most likely going to grab the Cresselia. Yep, and there it is. That way they can embrace the active, retreat it, promote the Cresselia. Uh, embrace on to itself as well uh, and then remove damage counters from the Curlia and just be able to snipe that Sableye out of this game at the moment here. Double Iona going back into the deck with Palpad. Iono is super disruptive here. We could all potentially just see another Iono. Yep, there it is, another Iono. That's the, technically that was the fourth one and then two going back in. So that's gonna be a lot of Iono this game coming from Nick. They both get four cards here. And let's start seeing some things here. There is a concealed cards, discarding another energy, drawing two more. Looks like a battle pass and a research. And refinement discarding the battle pass, hitting worker and another energy. They are gonna go ahead and evolve, manually attach, and go ahead and refinement discarding the research, drawing two more, hitting the Manaphy. Definitely a solid card, but at the same time, putting Manaphy down makes it a little bit easier for Alex to chip away with the Sableye, but it also prevents the Greninja play from happening. We're going to see the first embrace onto the active and embrace onto the crest. And it looks like a retreat is in full order here, getting those energies back into the bin. Here comes the crest. It's got enough damage counters on its psychotype type Pokemon to just move them over to the Sableye, taking the KO, healing off the Curlia and the Cresselia completely and leaving the Gardevoir and the other Curlia with just two damage counters each. And yeah, here comes the Radiant Greninja. Uh, looks like he's got the attachment and a gate here so potentially gonna see the two prize turn here from alex with that moonlight shirk and onto the two curlia concealed cards first discarding a psychic drawing two and hits another mirage gate and here is the nest ball gonna double check and see what they have left they at least have a couple energy in there looks like a water and a grass i think energy recycler still in there gonna bench down another sableye guaranteeing it coming into play after the greninja goes down and yeah here is the gate grass and water from the deck on to the active greninja I believe there is still a water energy in Alex's hand. You could potentially just prematurely attach that to the Tina in case you need to swing with it here. Uh, has access to Poke Gear as well, looking at the top seven cards to get a supporter. And right on the top, there is the Roxanne and a boss's orders. I think Roxanne is definitely the correct call here. Uh, you're definitely going to be desperate for a super rod and or energy recycler at this point in time to be able to use these other mirage gates 
and just Roxanne is just gonna maximize your hand and reset what you've got going on. It also will disrupt Nick down to two cards in hand. And if this goes well here, you know, the curly is a go away, two cards in hand draws per turn. So not gonna be able to refinement their way out of this. They could potentially conceal cards depending on how many energy cards are left in the deck here if they draw into them. So a little bit of shuffling from both. And yeah, Roxanne definitely going to reset this game a little bit here. Six cards for Alex. Hits Rod and Recycler. No gates, though. So definitely hard to say if it's correct to play him. And then, yeah, Moonlight Shuriken going to snipe these two Curlias. Get them out of here. And Alex is going to take two prize cards. Taking the lead here just up by one. And it looks like Nick's got a Iono, an Artisan, and a Fog Crystal. Fog Crystal, you can grab another energy and discard it with concealed cards. Just trying to find your outs a little bit further here. Or could potentially get a Ralts that was shuffled back in earlier in the game. Yep, Ralts is the deciding piece here. double checking seeing what's left in the deck here before a shuffle not too too many options uh really that nick can make in this turn uh, most likely we'll end up playing the iono that we do see in their hand here to further disrupt anything that alex has going on Double checking discard piles and lost zones before making any plays. Typically pretty solid. And it looks like they are gonna go ahead and put down the Ralts. And oh, the Artisan is questionable. Uh, they are putting the Artisan down. I don't think I like that play. It gives Alex the opportunity to Artisan into Sableye and Iono being played to disrupt Alex's hand here. And Nick is just going to go ahead and draw three since they didn't have a hand. And remember, at least one player has to put cards onto the bottom of the deck from the Iono for it to go off. And Artisan coming into play. Probably going to grab the Manaphy finally here. Looks like a fail. They definitely were eyeballing that Manaphy. Um... If they can get rid of the Greninja this turn, it feels okay. I could potentially just see them just retreating into the EX and swinging with the Greninja, maybe getting the Mana Fee. Uh, is definitely a mistake then at that point. So yeah, good call for them. That way Sableye doesn't have a free target. And Comfy comes up into the active. It looks like there's a gate in hand. I don't think there's any energy in there whatsoever, so they're going to have to hit Rod or Recycler here. Uh, Flower Selecting gets rid of a boss for a boss, I believe. Uh, double checking the discard pile here. There's a lot of energy in the bin. Yeah, Recycler definitely needs to be hit. And uh, I think their their only choice here is to play an Iono. There's just, what, one energy card in the deck right now? Using the Artisan to check what's left in the deck and re-randomize the card positionings. Definitely okay here. And there is the Iono to follow up. Unfortunately, putting those two gates in the bottom and only drawing two cards definitely does not feel pretty good here again. And would prefer to have a Roxanne. Looks like another Iono and a Water Energy have been drawn here. Uh, water Energy on to the Tina and a pass from Alex. And let's see what happens here. Can Nick close this game out? We have a level ball. Grabbing a Curlia so they can refinement. I do see a rare candy in their hand as well. So if they were able to potentially draw into the Shining Arcana from something else to accelerate a little bit more, it feels a little bit better than attacking with the EX, knowing that Patina could potentially come out on the following turn. Again, though, I don't think 
there is any cleansing gloves in Alex's list and there is a worker getting rid of the artisan to draw three additional before evolving anywhere. Another rare candy of battle pass and another Iono. But yeah, so here is the Curlia and most likely just gonna refinement away the battle pass to draw two more cards. Drawing yet another battle pass as well. Doesn't seem like there's too, too much they could do here. Uh, if they have access to Zashian though, uh, I know they have boss, it would feel pretty solid here. And we're gonna see triple embrace on to the Preselia. He's gonna go ahead and get this two prizer out of the active, send up Preselia, and then just go ahead and hit this thing for 110 damage for the KO. Going down to a single prize card remaining. And Tina comes up. And what can Alex do other than play another Iono? Putting his one card on the bottom of the deck and drawing two, leaving Nick with just one card. Not even gonna look at it here. And let's see if Alex has anything. In this case, uh, Gate and Recycler or Rod would have been perfect to set up the math. And just a pass uh, back over. Uh, energy card in hand so they can go ahead and moonlight shirk and I'm sorry concealed cards here drawing two finds the shining arcana there's the boss for the save a lot and the fist bump and Nick takes the game Whew, what a game hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you think down below in the comments don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time for the next game see you later peace out thank you for making it this far in the video I just want to take a second to thank all of the channel members here your support is super appreciated thank you all so much if you want to consider becoming a member it's as low as 99 cents a month and your support goes a long way to help me continue to make content like this if you enjoy it don't forget to smash the like button consider becoming a member and i'll see you guys next time much love peace out